It's very arguable that one other individual had as much to do with the founding of the scouting movement as Baden Powell. There is significant historical evidence that scouting really is the melding of these two men's concepts, ideas, and practical applications into what we know as scouting today. This week, we'll learn more about the life and legacy of Ernest Thompson Seton on this edition of Artifact of the Week. Born in 1860 in England, Ernest Evan Thompson was the next to youngest of 10 sons. The family moved to Ontario when Ernest was not quite six and he grew up on a family farm near Toronto. As a boy, he would spend his time in the woods drawing and studying animals. This also provided an escape from an abusive father. Ernest loved learning about nature down to the finest detail. It is reported that he once worked by candlelight to count every feather on a grackle's wing. In 1879, he attended the Ontario College of Art, then won a scholarship in art to the Royal Academy in London, England in 1880. In the 1890s, he continued his art training in Paris. It's reported that on his 21st birthday, Ernest's father presented him with a bill for all of the expenses connected with his childhood and youth, including the fee charged by the doctor who delivered him. In his autobiography, Seton says he didn't have the money to pay, repay the man, so he went to work immediately and used the money he made to leave the household forever. As an adult, he adopted the name Seton from a distantly related family member that was Scottish nobility. In 1882, he joined his brother on a homestead in Manitoba, where he began to write. In 1883, he moved to New York City to continue publication of his stories and his artwork. And by the early 20th century, he had published a number of books on nature, lore, and outdoor living. In 1891, he published The Birds of Manitoba and was appointed provincial naturalist by the government of Manitoba. He continued to publish books about Manitoba for decades to come. In 1893, Seton was drawn to New Mexico by the challenge to capture a gray wolf known as Lobo. Ranchers in the area had placed a $1,000 bounty on Lobo and Seton estimated it would take a couple of weeks to capture or kill the animal. Four months later, on January 31st, 1894, Lobo was trapped. Seton's pursuit of Lobo changed his perspective on predators. Seton became a defender of the wolf and many of his ideas about wildlife conservation and preservation came about after his experience with Lobo. The story of his pursuit of Lobo became the first story in his 1898 book, Wild Animals I Have Known, a collection of stories about animal heroes and villains. It was the success of this book that allowed him to build his estate in Coscob, Massachusetts. In 1902, a group of boys tore down a part of the fence at his Coscob estate, so he invited them to camp on his property over their spring break from school. Seton was fascinated by Native American culture, beliefs, and practices. He declared the boys were a tribe and had them elect their own leaders and taught them many woodcraft skills and shared with them stories about Native Americans. At this time, he published a series of articles for youth entitled Ernest Thompson Seton's Boys in the Ladies' Home Journal. These featured the outdoor activities and Indian lore of this group. The kids remained together and in July of 1902, the Woodcraft Indians were born. By 1906, Seton had published a manual, The Birch Bark Roll of the Woodcraft Indians. Also in 1906, he traveled to London where he met with Baden Pohl and they exchanged ideas about the shared beliefs for an outdoor-based youth development program and organization. In 1910, Seton was invited to join the Boy Scouts of America and merge his Woodcraft Indians into the BSA. He was also asked to help author the first BSA handbook, a task he accepted. The first handbook bore the names of both Baden Pohl and Seton on the cover. It was essentially a collection of articles Seton had written for other publications and some of the information from Baden Pohl's Aids to Scouting. Early on, there was a level of disagreement between Seton and BP over who had greater contributions to the founding of the scouting movement. The disagreement grew to a point where the BSA authored a new edition of the handbook, which was a complete rewrite and removed both names from the cover. Seton served as chief scout of the BSA from 1910 until 1915, when he resigned from the BSA and the position of chief scout was retired. Ernest Thompson Seton died at Seton Village, New Mexico in October 1946. After Seton left the BSA, he relaunched his Woodcraft Indian organization as the Woodcraft League of America, a co-educational program open to children between the ages of four and 94. Today, the Woodcraft movement can be found and growing all over Europe, and there is one formal Woodcraft group with ties to the Woodcraft League remaining in the United States. That group is the Woodcraft Rangers, which serve the youth of the greater Los Angeles area. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. 
Join us again as we continue to learn more about the history of the BSA through the collection of the National Scouting Museum and Artifact of the Week.